Hello and welcome to another episode of Sketch Series and today I'm going to show you guys how I approach comic book storytelling. Now when you do comic book storytelling what you're talking about is how you lay out a page. In other words how do you present panels to transmit a story or transmit a scene. So I'm actually working on a small project right now. I kind of just want to build my portfolio so I'm working on a few small projects to showcase and in one of the scenes that I'm working on, and it's not really a story or anything, it's just a, a scene. There's a guy getting off an elevator. He's an archer. Let's say, let's let's imagine he's the Green Arrow, right? Or or Hawkeye or whoever you, whatever archer you'd like to put in. And he's getting off an elevator in a business uh, a building where people, I guess, are are villains or something. And he's just going to kill them all. So. Uh, what I decided to do was uh, frame a couple shots and kind of showcase how all of these things play together. Now one of the key things you're seeing here is I'm very quick at my sketch phase with my pencils. I'm not worried too much about perfect lines, perfect rectangles. You can kind of see here that everything's kind of rough and, and rough and ready. Um, I kind of indicate some basic, uh, basic text kind of like a action text. And I indicate where everybody is and what everybody kind of looks like more or less. But if I were to actually follow this through to rendering and all that and adding colors, I'd probably import it to my PC and work on it digitally from this point. Uh, scan it and, and put it in. But the composition is a very important thing because uh, here is a page af right after he steps out of the elevator and he points his, his bow and arrow at people. So the first panel that I wanted to show is kind of everybody turning around to see him. And there's a couple of people in this business meeting. So they're all kind of shocked, they're all kind of angry, and they're all kind of scared because he's pointing a bow at them. And so you get a mixed reaction. I wanted some people to look kind of shocked, other people to look scared, other people to run away, and other people to kind of like position for a fight. So I wanted my first shot to establish who the targets are. And then uh, my second shot, I'm not too happy with it. I might change it later. But kind of just showing that he already, by the time they turn around and looked, he's already shot his arrows. He's already, they're dead, essentially. They, they, death is flying toward them at this point. Um, and you can kind of see that when I'm working on this stuff, I, I do all my uh, rough, pencils and then when I go back to do the inks I get bored of doing one thing or the other so I mix it up and I do one panel and then I skip around and do another panel you can kinda of see that I started off with that middle panel and then I went back up and now I'm doing this uh, business meeting type thing and just roughing out what everybody looks like because it's a business meeting um, you can imagine that everybody's pretty much wearing suits, ties, dress shirts so having diversity in your characters, in background characters and for and main characters, is really important. And I like to convey that with facial structure, with hair, and if I were to color it, probably different kinds of ties and maybe uh, some shirts might be, you know, striped or something, and just give them different colors and stuff, just to show that they are totally different people. They're not all the same person copied a hundred times. I used to have the problem where all my people look the same and I'm trying to work away from that by working around my problems until I get them fixed. Now um, you can kind of see me here. I'm trying to diversify what everybody's doing. There's the one guy far on the right who's uh, turning around and kind of staring. There's the other guy in the middle kind of motioning toward the guy on the left that he, he should probably leave. So we get a sense that the guy on the left is kind of important. And I'm actually going to go back in a little bit and add in another guy on the top there. And you can kind of see me going in. And I'm going to add in a guy on the top kind of motioning toward his jacket as though he has a gun in his jacket. And the idea behind this is that this guy on the far left, he seems important. And I want to convey that. So I want a lot of my action to be leaning toward the left. The way I compose my shots, I try to do a couple things. I think about the rule of thirds. In other words, I divide a panel into three and kind of position key things on one of the three points in the panel, the center or one of the sides. I usually stick to one of the sides. And then uh, I move the action along that way. So by 
guiding the action toward the left, your eye tends to linger on the left and kind of focus on that one guy. Now I'm going to go and I want to do something kind of stylistic for this. So I think what I'm going to do is ink this all in black or in a really dark color, maybe with some red splatter on it. And this is essentially the targets being killed. And so um, I wanted to show the arrows going through. I wanted it to be very kinetic, very loose, and uh, really show off that all four targets have been dealt with. So in order to show that, and to show that efficiently, but also give it some style, instead of doing one panel where they're all shot, or a couple panels of them fighting, I decided to do four panels, one for each of the people, and show them being killed. Now, in the way that they're being killed, I'm thinking about, um, God, that's really dark, but in the way that they, the guy shot my arrow from the elevator in front of them, I'm thinking about each one and thinking about their position. So we can kind of see that I have to make sure that the arrow hits the right side. One guy has to be shot in the back. The guy who turned around and had his head turned around, he probably got shot in the head uh, just because the reader will identify that that was that one guy. And uh, I just kind of went from there and made sure that they all lined up that way. Another subtle thing that I did was made sure that the four people that are killed are almost all killed in the order that they're shown. So the guys on the far left versus the guy on the right. And they're all killed differently. Now here um, I'm changing the perspective for this one. This guy who was shot in the head, I want him to be leaning back on the table. And I kind of feel like uh, that that's not realistic. If he turned his head around and he got shot, I feel like he would just either lean back or lean forward and fall off. But for the comic book effect, we don't worry too much about realism in that sense, but more about style. And for my last image, I decided to do a frame of him kind of just holding that pose, that he's let go of his arrows, and he's kind of just in the zen of, okay, I'm done here, in, in that zen. Now, I didn't design him to look like the green arrow. He's just a guy wearing kind of like a baseball tee, I guess you would call it. And... uh He's, he's kind of buff, I guess. I don't know. He's like a normal build, I guess. I, I didn't really think about character design too much. I came from a very simple hairstyle and very simple look and a very simple bow. Um, my point with all this was to work on storytelling and not on character design specifically. Uh, so when you are working on this stuff, you really want to focus on one thing. If you want to tell stories for a living and if you want to write comic books or graphic novels, a lot of times you'll be working with writers and with other people who are also create, creatively involved in the creative process. So they will design a character for you. They'll give you a, a summary of what a character should look like or whatever. So storytelling has to be independent of character design. And for this video, storytelling was important. So I really wanted to focus on showing reactions and making sure that the scene is well understood. Um, and I'll show you all three panels in a little bit here, but you will be able to see that all three panels kind of add up to one simple story. Now let's talk about that first panel. In the first panel, I kind of have here a background story. I'm going to have some text laid in on top of this, and it's essentially three different images of the same thing. It's him going up the elevator as a kid, as a teen, and then finally as an adult. Now the key thing is when he's an adult, we don't see his body yet. All we see is his boot, or his foot, or his uh, shoe, whatever you want to say, stepping out of that elevator. You can kind of see that I have some of the rough sketches and rough ideas, but I'm not too concerned with over-detailing over everything. The idea here is to kind of get a sense of progression in my story, that there's background and history going on in this building. Then you would turn the page and see the splash of my character pointing his bow and arrow at this room of whatever's going on. So your eye is drawn there and immediately you want to see what happens. And on the right side, on the next page, you would see that all these business people are reacting to it. He shoots them all, kills them all, and he's kind of left in the Zen state. So I feel like overall this really transmit the story that I wanted to show kind of nicely. And I'm very satisfied with it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'll see you next time. Take care.